Roquima, I am from Guatemala. As, as he said, thank you. As he said, uh, I just came last night or a few hours ago <laughs> because uh, I went to organize uh, the 75th anniversary of commemoration of the, our revolution. I know that to talk about the revolution in Guatemala is kind of frustrated because it was uh, an interrupt by USA. So to say 75 anniversary is like, uh, but anyway, <laughs> we have to, it's our task, my generation, to, to tell the people that is burning, that the next generation, what's happening in Guatemala. Uh, so I, I value and appreciate, I belong to Socialist Action Canada, and thank you very much uh, to give us this uh, space because it's important to tell the world what happened in Guatemala and what is happening now. It's almost, we don't have, a, almost we don't have a country anymore, but we are here now. I want to tell you uh, that at the end, we are gonna have uh, the big, uh, participation of Jacobo Vargas Foronda. I will uh, to introduce you after. He is gonna be in charge of all the questions that you have and everything you want to, because he is the one. Um, we are gonna see, I want to, um, to tell you that there is no a documentary of Guatemala, of the revolution, there is no in English. So what I have to do in Guatemala when I was there now is to, put all the parts together because it's uh, really interesting to see the real uh, is parts, the real uh, escenas, uh, scenes, scenes. So we, we translate subtitle just to give you a guide. It's uh, gonna be 18 minutes for this, but after that, it's in English. So we put all the parts together and we did our best because I don't know why there is no anything uh, in English, and it's very important. So maybe from now on we are gonna be thinking in that project to do a very good uh, documentary in English. But before that, I want to tell you that, um, I don't know if you guys know, but Che Guevara lived in Guatemala exactly when happened the invasion of USA. So I went to investigate where he lived, and I did a, a, a little bit video, it's only four minutes. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's gonna be the 45 minutes of the revolution. So thank you very much to be here. There is some snack, tostadas, that is a informal uh, snack in Guatemala. There is for free coffee. And I really value and appreciate that you are here now. Thank you very much. Now I'm pleased to welcome our guest speaker, Socialist Action member Nettie Marroquin, just returned from a tour of Guatemala, and Jacobo Vargas Foronda, Guatemalan professor, jurist, journalist, and refugee rights activist. Please welcome them both. I want to tell you that Jacobo Vargas Foronda has to do a lot of here because his name Jacobo is in honor of Jacobo Arben Guzman, but not only because of that. Jacobo Arben Guzman was very close friends of his uh, parents, which were very, very deep involved in the arts in Guatemala, very, very talented people. So, um, my son, Luis Angel Gomez, is gonna help us with the translation because, you know, but... Sure, but before I, I am going to speak about Guatemala right now, I think it is necessary to speak a few about the movement in 1944. That's okay? Sure. Okay. Lo que ustedes vieron ahí, en 1944, tuvo origen en el movimiento revolucionario de 1920. So what you saw in the video, uh, it didn't really all start in 1944, but then it began 
1921st, the revolution, which it wasn't like really loud, but then that's when it really started. Okay, I am going to try to speak in English, okay? And if I have difficult, then you are going to help me. Okay. okay, now, that means that the movement in 1944 was a response of many years of repression mm -hmm. from 1920 to 44. That's okay. And you saw in the, in the movies, one face never appear. Who was that? <laughs> Which people never appear in the in the video? Hmm? Yes, indigenous people. They never appear in the movies. Who? Okay. Indigenous. Mayas people. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. This looks that the movement in 1944 was a white people. That's not true. That's not true. Native people was a very, very, very active participant, but in a very quiet form. From inside. And that is United States never, never accept. Because never before in Latin America, indigenous people was able to show the face. Mm -hmm. Never. No in Mexico in 1910. No in Nicaragua with Sandino. It was in Guatemala for the first time. And it is the most dangerous for the United States, most than the uh, reform agraria, uh, agraria reform, and most of the confiscation of the land through the United Company. It is about money, yeah, yeah. but when indigenous people start to show the face, uh oh. It is not, nothing good for Latin America, for Canada, and for the United States. We have here in Canada indigenous people living in reserves. In a very, very, very... Mm -hmm. And from Canada and the United States, we only see white faces, mm -hmm. white people. Hmm? And it is one of the biggest lesson that we have from Guatemala in 1944. What happened in Ecuador a few days ago? Mm -hmm. Indigenous people show face. No one white in Ecuador was as a leader in the movements in Ecuador was the inverse, why people was here, behind, and indigenous people was in the front. Mm -hmm. This is a second lesson. Now, we see the name of the uh, American uh, academic, a very, very good academic, okay. And before him, we have a book uh, from another American academic, a woman, Jonas, uh, Guatemala, Experimento de America Latina. It's the, uh, an experiment of Latin America. Guatemala is like a laboratory for Latin America. And now I can go to answer to your question, what is happening now? After 1994, after the intervention, what do we have in Guatemala? Internal, internal war. The people who wanted to recover the revolution, we have the guerrillas. 
and why the guerrillas never took the power. Not because people doesn't want to take the power, and because the United States and Israel again took Guatemala. It is not possible that in Guatemala again we have something so dangerous for Latin America. And I used to say that from 1954, the intervention in Guatemala, United States commit a crime. We are living 65 years under a very, very strong repression. Mm -hmm. Never stopped repression. No, after the peace accord in 1996. No, the repression is the same actually now. In a very quiet, quiet form. And second, we have to accept that during many years, we have like a light of hope around the world when we have the socialists alive, the Soviet Union, the socialist camp. People saw something is possible to do, but the Soviet Union went down. And for ma millions of people, the hope went down. That's the same in Guatemala. And the United States know very well how to manipulate people in this situation. You never will be able to have hope. You have to accept the condition under which you are living right now. That's what happened in Guatemala. I don't know if you... Uh, okay, thank you. Yes, it's okay. Hold on, I'll... Uh, everyone who wants to have a question, raise your hand and I'll... All right, so uh, to make it gender balanced, I'll be going from man to woman. So uh, you, sir, you can go first. So what is happening today with the people of Guatemala that are trying to get to the U.S. border and are getting stuck in Mexico? What is this story? People leaving Guatemala today, mm -hmm. trying to get into the United States, mm -hmm. then being stopped there and getting forced to stay in Mexico. Mm -hmm. What is that story? Yeah. First, uh, it is very important to, to, to understand one situation. Why we have people moving from Guatemala to the United States? The rich people in Guatemala learn one thing. We have to send people from Guatemala to the United States to work because they send to us American dollars, a very free American dollars. They don't spend one cent to get American dollars back. It is why we have thousands and thousands of Guatemalan people moving to the United States. They do not want open jobs in Guatemala. They force people to move to the United States. It is not involuntary. And for now, they are making money with the United States about saying that we are going to have some plans, programs to open industry, to open jobs in Guatemala. But always the money goes to the pocket of the rich and never to people. And for the United States, for Trump, he has no interest in what happened with the Guatemalan people. For him, we can kill all of them. It's like a Nazi in Latin America. 
and to answer to your question, what will happen, that is, they will be dying in their struggle to find jobs, to find life. Is there a possibility in Mexico for them? Yes. No. 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 No hay posibilidad in Mexico. Oh, young lady in the back. Right. Thank you. That's a very nice compliment. Um, uh, I'm wondering about the free press. In, if you have a women's press active in Guatemala. Ahí sí no lo escuché, no lo escuché. Dice de que quiere saber más sobre la la libertad de prensa y que si hay mujeres que están y que si hay presos donde la mujer sea la que esté. Libertad de prensa o la participación de la mujer. Pregunta de bien. I'm sorry, so was that some, uh, is your question, it's regarding the free press. Free press uncontrolled by uh, corporate influence. Corporate influence by women? No corporate influence. Cor no corporate influence. Uh, is, there is there a free press? Yes. Entonces, si hay periódico independiente. We don't have free press in Guatemala. Uh, siglo XXI, uh, prensa libre, uh, la televisión, ok, TV, the newspaper, uh, Prensa Libre, the newspaper, Siglo XXI, all of them work for the government and for the rich people. We don't have free press. That is, is not true. So, and the second part was the, the women's involvement. You had a, a Nobel Prize winner, mm -hmm. and there must have been some uh, history for that to happen. So, was she actively working on her own, or was it the family as a, as a group? As was she doing? No escucho. Entonces, entonces dice de que ella está, está enterada de que tuvimos una premio Nobel, que sería, pues, Roberta, Roberta Menchú. Menchú. Ha estado trabajando activamente ella solita, con, con apoyo de quién, y cómo ha sido el trabajo de ella. Uh -huh. so, así, para comparación con, con por ejemplo, eh, que ella pueda hablar por que tenga que le dé voz a las injusticias que están pasando, pero cómo si lo, lo dan a conocer en los medios o no, cómo ha sido ese trabajo de ella. Ya, ya. Aquí, aquí te, te voy a pedir ayuda porque lo que voy a quiero decir. Eh, en Guatemala la mujer, independientemente, no, independientemente de Rigoberta Menchú, no, sí, la mujer sí, tiene un papel sumamente importante en Guatemala hoy. So in Guatemala today, uh, women are having a really important role, in, in, regardless of uh, uh, Rigoberta Menchú, which was the Peace Nobel Prize. Antes de Rigoberta, le voy a mencionar un nombre de una líder indígena y que sigue luchando en Guatemala, que se llama Rosalina Tuyuco. So before Rigoberta Menchú, uh, there, there's another woman activist that's... Indígena. Indigenous woman activist that has, that has a really important uh, role, and her name is... Y la otra mujer Rosalina ahora... Tuyuc. So Rosalina Tuyuc, I'm sorry. Rosalina Tuyuc, es la primera, está Rosalina Tuyuc, aparece Rigoberta Menchú en la picture, y ahora tenemos con Codeca a Tilma Cabrera. And now, um, recently in these past elections, there was another uh, indigenous woman uh, who ran for presidency uh, for the um, Codeca movement. O sea, el movimiento, eh, de de los pueblos. So it's the uh, liberation of uh, the movement of, of uh, indig um, liberation of the peoples. Mm -hmm. And she had really good uh, results. Y lo último. La revolución del 44 solo fue posible por la participación de la mujer. And the revolution of uh, the 44, 1944, was only possible with uh, the participation of women. Hey, uh, Barry. My name is Barry. I'm a federal secretary of socialist action, and I have a certain uh, experience with solidarity with the uh, movements in Central America. We remember well the 1980s after the Nicaraguan Revolution in 1979 and the um, ongoing struggle in the neighboring countries. And we organized uh, the Toronto Anti-Intervention Coalition. I was a co-chair at the time in the 1980s. We had demonstrations regularly of two to three thousand people in uh, downtown Toronto. 
uh, demanding an end to uh, U.S. intervention in Central America and Canadian complicity with U.S. intervention. Um, the um, movement here was actively in solidarity with the, uh, well, the, with the FMLN in El Salvador, with the FSLN, which formed the government in Nicaragua, and with the URNG, the, um, uh, the guerrillas that you refer to in, in, in Guatemala. Um, these valiant efforts, unfortunately, were uh, unfulfilled, and in the case of Nicaragua, driven back. And driven back not only because of um, the orchestrated uh, intervention uh, by uh, American imperialism and, and its, um, its collaborators in the form of Ottawa and, uh, of course, the European uh, uh, countries. The problem in Guatemala, in my respectful opinion, was not that uh, the Arbenz government was communist but that it was not communist. I think that was the chief problem. Uh, there was some fabulous advances in, in literacy, in the right of women to vote, in a partial land reform, and uh, other uh, social uh, benefits that were uh, achieved and, and, and extended to parts of the population. But an indication of the problem was the fact that the Arbenz government and the, the preceding government actually offered money to the United Fruit Company, mm. when in fact the United Fruit Company had uh, raped and pillaged the economy and the environment of that country for generations and did not deserve money, but in fact owed reparations, especially to the indigenous people of Guatemala. So the problem was not the existence of a communist government or a communist influenced government. In fact, the KGB agent, I think, was speaking quite truthfully when he said the Soviet Union gave no support, had no mission, had no intention of extending support to any revolutionary process in, in Guatemala. He was quite correct. In fact, the influence of the Soviet Union was to advise governments uh, and rebellious movements in the region and even beyond the region to go slow, to try to find a basis of unity with the progressive sectors of the bourgeoisie, with progressive landlords, if any could be found. In other words, a concept of revolution that begins with a democratic phase and supposedly advances to a socialist phase, but unfortunately it never reaches the uh, socialist stage of the revolution. It remains stuck in the liberal phase and is defeated through the frustrations and in, 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 in incapacity of the workers' movement to advance beyond that preliminary phase of the struggle. Yeah, yeah. Che Guevara drew the lesson very, very clearly, and he was there in 1954. And it was wonderful to see uh, the very small room that he occupied while he uh, stayed in, uh, in Guatemala City. And he said, drawing on the experience of the Arban government and the U.S. intervention, the revolution will be socialist in character, or it will be a caricature of a revolution, not a real revolution. And, and that was his advice to all of those who struggle for social justice ever since then. Uh, these events, this anniversary, takes place now in the shadow of Chile, Ecuador, and Haiti. In Chile, we have five days of general strike. There was a big demonstration just yesterday at Bloor and Young, and there's a, a mass uh, gathering at uh, Dundas Square uh, this evening. Uh, in Ecuador, uh, a big uprising. Uh, in Haiti, uh, flames and fury of masses of people who've been immiserated for generations. The, of course, the Canadian government helped to overthrow with the U.S. the most recently, the, the, the only democratically elected uh, government in, in Haiti, um, uh, Jean-Bertrand Aristide, um, uh, who was overthrown by um, intervention. Yeah. So that's, that's, the, that, that's my comment. And the, uh, the question is, what is the lesson of the experience of the Guatemalan uh, Revolution? Uh, how to go beyond the situation where uh, it stops and is not completed through the full mobilization of workers and peasants to take power into their own hands. Mejor hablo en español, mejor me concentro. Primer elemento importante 
que tomemos como experiencia. So the first element that we're going to take as an experience en el continente, en América Latina, Estados Unidos y Canadá. In America, like the whole continent. Durante la Segunda Guerra Mundial, el jefe de la propaganda nazi During the Second World War, the head of uh, the Nazi propaganda encontró algo y lo dijo muy bien. He found something and he said it well. Una mentira dicha cien veces se convierte en verdad. A lie said a uh, hundred times becomes a reality. Creo que era Gobles, el teórico de la propaganda nazi. Hoy tenemos en Guatemala la repetición de la mentira en el continente. Arbenz es comunista. Today, in Guatemala, we have exactly the same thing repeating again. Arbenz was a communist. Y todo el continente, todo el continente, the whole continent, incluido Canadá, including Canada, lo aceptó. Accepted it. Creyeron en la mentira. They believed the lie. Es una lección. So that's the lesson. Ahora, now, tenemos la mentira del terrorismo. Now we have the lie of uh, terrorism. Desde septiembre 13, en las Torres Gemelas. 9-11, since 9-11, with uh, the Twin Towers. Okay. Tenemos la repetición sistemática de la mentira de manera universal. We have a systematic repetition of, uh, of lies uh, that's happening universally. Saddam Hussein tiene arma atómica. Saddam Hussein had uh, um, weapons of mass destruction. Mentira. Lie. En Libia, en Libia, hay un dictador terrorista. There's a really bad dictator. Mentira. Lie. Cuando triunfó la revolución cubana, when uh, the Cuban revolution uh, it's success, had a success, el terrorista era Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro was the terrorist. Gran mentira. Lie. Pasaron a Venezuela con Chávez. Now with Chávez in Venezuela. Y ahora Canadá juega con la mentira. And now Canada is going along with the lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Canadá es enemigo de Chávez. So now Canada is enemy of Chávez and the Chávez people. Entonces ahora tenemos dos fuertes países del continente. So now we have two strong, pow powerful countries in the continent. Canadá y Estados Unidos. Canada and the U.S. Contra el continente latinoamericano. Against the Latin American continent. Estados Unidos se está amarrando porque es lo único que le queda. So, so the U.S. is just grabbing because that's the only thing that they've got. Ya perdieron el control en el mundo. They lost control in the world. Y no pueden perder su patio. And they cannot lose their backyard. Mm -hmm. yeah. ¿Qué dice el ladrón y mentiroso presidente de Ecuador? So what is, what is the Ecuador lying president saying right now? Ladrón y mentiroso. Ladrón, uh, um, thief and a liar. What is the thief and liar president of Ecuador saying now? For sure. Que todo el movimiento indígena. That all that uh, indigenous movement. Lo organizó Maduro. Well, Maduro organized it. Y lo escuchamos. And we hear. Y Canadá lo repite. And Canada repeats it. En Chile lo mismo. It's the same with Chile. Esto viene organizado de afuera. This is coming up from outside. This organization is coming from outside. Y otra vez Venezuela. And again, Venezuela is the responsible one. Yeah. Canada con el Grupo Lima. Canada with uh, the Lima Group. Yeah. Yeah. Apoya sure. Sure. a Morena sure. en Ecuador. Support Morena in Ecuador. Y ahora apoya a Piñera en Chile. And now Piñera in Chile. Yeah. Shame. 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 Yeah. This Entonces, ya, una cosa más termina. One more little thing. Es, esto, esto es como experiencia, como la mentira. So this is an experience of how lección. the lie is yeah. a big lesson to respond to Y entonces, para salir de esta situación. So to get out of this situation. Solo nos queda la solidaridad continental y la lucha continental. So the only thing that we have now is the sol uh, continental solidarity and uh, la lucha continental. continental. Sorry? Continental struggle. Uh -huh. And continental struggle. All right. Um, <coughs> do you, uh, oh, sorry. 
Bill Elliott. Okay, yeah, I was going to say uh, to support gender balance, I'll have the sister in the front. Okay. Uh, okay, I, I'm just wondering if you are aware of a little bit of hope in the British Columbia legislature this week for Indigenous people. Oh, yeah. What I heard on the radio, I wasn't there, is that the uh, legislature um, was packed with Indigenous uh, leaders and people and that they are putting forward that um, British Columbia should uh, accept the um, UN Indigenous um, you know, Declaration and thus be a first. Now it has to pass and they don't, the government does not have a majority. But maybe if there's enough pressure from Indigenous and other Canadians, then maybe maybe it could pass and that would be a big step and it would make the US I mean they'd be they'd be shitting bricks mm -hmm. <laughs> they would be having nightmares in their beds trip Trump will go ballistic um, but yeah it's so when I heard that I thought this is hopeful it's a small step but it's symbolic and uh, let's just keep an eye on it mm -hmm. so was that news that you knew that mm -hmm. okay good good Es importante it's important que nosotros los blancos that us white people mm -hmm. que nosotros los intelectuales us the intellectuals mm -hmm. entendamos understand que no hemos podido that we, we haven't been able to responder a las necesidades de los pueblos respond to the people's necessities mm -hmm. uh, okay we know that in this room <laughs> y entonces ahora tenemos que Aprender so now what we have to learn y aceptar and accept el liderazgo de los indígenas. The uh, indigenous leadership. Porque es lo que más real tenemos para transformar el continente. Because that's the most realist thing to transform uh, the continent. Y ayudar al movimiento indígena continental. And help uh, the, the indigenous movement. Um, in the continental scale, a que tenga una orientación positiva. so they can have like Ayuda. a positive um, no orientation. Lead. Help, not lead. Mm -hmm. Help, but not lead. Yes, okay. opinion. <laughs> That's his opinion. Uh, no, you're 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 onto it. Right. Your English is good. It, it is. Yeah. Your English yeah. is fine. <laughs> um, our uh, friend over here, um, <laughs> our singer friend. I forgot your name. It's okay. I, I'll pass. I was You'll just pass? listening and I'm learning. That's good. Thing. Okay, um, we have this gentleman here in the front with the jean jacket. Uh, you, sir? Yes. Okay. Uh, you had a question? I was wondering uh, uh, about the, what is the, the, the numbers of the, the indigenous movements in, in uh, particularly in Guatemala? How, you know, uh, we're, we're not doing large numbers in, in Canada. We're hopefully they've got a lot, of, a lot of force, more, more, more force. But what, what's the numbers of the indigenous people in Guatemala? And, and some of the other Latin American countries. Indigenous population. Yeah. Okay, okay, uh -huh. Like a majority? Yeah, yeah. bueno. Eh, eh, aquí hay que hacer una aclaración muy importante. So we have to uh, make something clear here, just so it's clear. En Guatemala, in Guatemala, el 70% es indígenas. The 70% of population is indigenous. Ooh. Oh, okay. Pero, El, los gobiernos manipulan las estadísticas Manipulate the, uh, statistics and results. ¿Ya? para que el número sea menor a la opinión mundial. So that the numbers are lower to the um, worldwide opinion. Mm. Primero. Y First segundo, all, second, todavía hay un sector en la población. There is still a sector in the population. En Guatemala. En Guatemala. En Bolivia, Bolivia, en Perú, en Ecuador, en México, en Chile, en Argentina, todavía hay vergüenza decir yo soy indio. So in all these countries, Indígena. in all these countries, uh, there's still some sort of uh, vergüenza, no sé, shame of, of actually acknowledging that you're indigenous. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I am an indigenous people. Okay. It's a shame. Racism. Some like some some. You still have that stigma because of the systematic 
uh, you know, discrimination, discrimination, you know, repeat a lie a hundred times and then it becomes truth. They, be, they, they get discriminated and then they actually feel that, inferior. you know, inferior. Yeah. Our uh, friend there in the jean jacket uh, in the center, uh, yes, you? Yeah, I have at least a couple of questions, one more personal than the other one, I would say. Um, if you were talked about hope and a lack of hope in some ways, uh, if you were to go to Guatemala, uh, are there any particular places that express some kind of hope in terms of movements or situations? Si fueras a Guatemala, habría algunos algunos lugares donde expresaran alguna esperanza política o social. Por ejemplo, en Nuevos Horizontes, por ejemplo, en Nuevos Horizontes en el Petén, en, en el Petén hay un grupo de ex guerrilleros que comenzaron una finca o algo así. Uh, there was an ex, uh, ex pio guerrillas who started a farm in el Petén. So, uh, are, Lugares así, ¿eso expresa esperanza? ¿Does that express some kind of hope? ¿O are there other places like that? ¿O what's your opinion on that? ¿Cuál es tu opinión acerca de esos lugares así y en otros lugares? ¿Y hay otros lugares así o no? ¿O are there other places like that? Secondly, and more uh, specifically to the video, um, do you, uh, uh, what's this, it, it, it doesn't really address what happened after the peace accords. ¿Qué pasó después de lo, those accords to pass in reference to narco traficantes, with the in reference to narco traffic traffickers, uh, drug traffickers, and the Samaras in particular, and the children who were abandoned, abandonados, los niños que fueron abandonados. Uh, ¿Qué pasó después? Uh, porque hay mucha violencia, más violencia ahora. Si sí, comprendo bien, there's more violence now. In terms of the assassins, there's more uh, killings now than during the Civil War, que durante la guerra civil. Entonces, ¿cómo se explica eso ahora? How do you explain that now? And what are some of the other solutions? What are some of the solutions? Yeah. What is revolution? Primer elemento. First element. En Guatemala no hay ningún grupo que esté organizando guerrilla. In no. Guatemala, there isn't any w one single group that's organizing a guerrilla movement. Ninguno. It's Eso not. es una mentira del Estado. So that's a lie of, of uh, the state, of the government. Los movimientos indígenas, the indigenous movements, han logrado levantar su voz, have raised their voice, y se han ido organizando. And they've been organizing. Y justamente los quieren dividir. And that's, that's precisely why they want to divide them. Con represión. With repression. Y este es guerrillero. And este es guerrillero. This is a guerrilla fighter. This is a guerrilla fighter. Guerrillero en Guatemala es una mala palabra. A guerrilla fighter in Guatemala, it's a bad word. Like it's not seen bad. Éramos los comunistas. We were the communists. Yeah. Y esto sigue viéndose con temor. And that, till producto de la mentira. And till today that's seen wrong uh, because of uh, lies. Lo que hay en, en Guatemala en este momento son dos movimientos. Well, what Guatemala's got now are two movements. Tenemos el movimiento de liberación de los pueblos con CODECA. We've got the, uh, the movement of the liberation of the peoples with CODECA. Y tenemos el movimiento político WINAC con un grupo de intelectuales indígenas. And we've got the movement of WINAC uh, with, um, with uh, some intellectual pe uh, indigenous people. That's a political party. Estos dos logran aglutinarse so if these two... en Guatemala tenemos Un so if, if these two groups get to um, yeah. unite, then we would have an awakening. In, opinion. in his opinion. <coughs> All right. Uh, comments? Maybe I'll step up so you can see me. 
I would like to touch up on the involvement of Israel in Central America and Latin America and ask about your uh, knowledge, opinion, and so on. As far as I know, that Israel is involved in most of those countries with supporting repressive, repressive regime, supplying an enormous amount of weapons, like the main, Israel is the major supplier of arms to Brazil and other places, and we know Guatemala, Nicaragua, and all of those. And today I received an email that Israel teaching the Chilean army and police that the best way to control the demonstrators is to shoot them in the legs because that was and is very successful the way they're doing it in Gaza. Yeah. What's your take on it, please? Israel is the cerebro de la maquinaria del terror y la inteligencia en América Latina. So Israel is the, the brain and uh, the one that's pulling the strings of terror in Latin America. Y los servicios secretos de inteligencia. And, uh, and the secret services of intelligence. Eso es Israel en América Latina. That's Israel in Latin America. En Guatemala, in Guatemala, Israel organizó toda la inteligencia they organized, el movimiento insurgente. they organized all the, um, the movements against uh, the insurgent movement. Ahora Israel está comprando tierras now, they're en toda América Latina. now they're buying land in all, throughout whole Latin America. En Argentina. Argentina. En Bolivia. Bolivia. En Ecuador. En Guatemala. En Perú. Ya en, en Israel hablan de el Israel latinoamericano. So in Israel, now they're talking about the uh, Latin American Israel. Es <laughs> la Patagonia, ¿no? Ah, es la Patagonia. Una realidad. They're going after the Patagonia. Eso es tal vez eh, la respuesta. Nos siguen con una presencia militar, inteligente y de mucho dinero. So they're, they're present in Latin America with a lot of money and uh, military presence. Y Influence. un ejemplo... And an example is el presidente actual, the current president, el títere de Guatemala, uh, the puppet of Guatemala, yeah. movió la embajada when he moved the embassy <laughs> de Tel Aviv oh, a Jerusalén. Él está vinculado con el narcotráfico. So he's um, involved with uh, narcotics. narcotics. Es un ladrón de dinero oscuro de la campaña electoral. He's a thief of uh, the uh, electoral process uh, money, like you know the financing of electoral money. Eso lo sabe Estados Unidos. So you, the, the US knows about that already. Pero Israel lo sostiene. But uh, Israel like it's holding him up, keeping him up. Esa es la El papel de Israel so en América Latina. <coughs> Israel's uh, role in Latin America. Thank you. Uh, Sam? I, I, just, I just would like to add a little bit something. Uh, I mm. just came back from Guatemala. I was for one month. And for some people, they told me that there is a beautiful lake in Guatemala, Atitlán. Some people told me that in some uh, little, because there, there is 12 little towns around the the lake, they told me that in a specific, uh, in some little towns, they have, a, a, the, the Israel has kind of invade with the, uh, how do you say, uh, rotulas, please? Okay, so I, can, I, I know where she's coming from. Uh, so recently I went to Guatemala about approximately three months ago, and that is true, I visited that village, it's around the lake, and uh, when you're walking around the streets of this neighborhood, it's beautiful. Uh, all the small businesses have signs in Hebrew letters now. Like almost <laughs> all of them. Almost all of them. And then, you know, it's just like it's been, it's kind of taken over by them now. Like they're, they're business owners, they're having their, their um, they're bringing things from over there, selling it there. But then it's kind of like a little Israeli. Um, Israeli colony. Colony in, yeah. in, in, in that lake. And it's. And the people is very prepotent. They 
because they, there is an indigenous area and uh, they treat them like servant. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just to add something up, uh, related to the um, Israeli presence in Guatemala, I strongly believe um, that it's due to a lot of religious fanatics. I don't know how they mix up the evangelical Christians to the Zionist uh, thing when Zionism doesn't really have anything to do with Judaism. Mm -hmm. um, so they're just taking over the Star of David and then so then that, that way they can have the approval of the whole world and all these fanatics that are, in my point of view, they're extremists. It happens in our Christian also Zionists. and also in Philippines and all of those yeah. places. What amount, unfortunately, is a huge population of um, fanatics evangelical fanatics and uh, now they're like oh my god it's ellos están organizando pequeños grupos israel they're organizing small groups israel en sectores indígenas in indigenous sectors que se disfrazan that they dress up como judíos like like um, like Jude, Jude, uh, jews jews judaism que se han metido en la cabeza and they've uh, actually convinced them or manipulated them to believe Que ellos no son indígenas. That they're not indigenous. Que son judíos. That they're Jewish. <laughs> Israelites. The tenth lost tribe. The tenth lost tribe. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah. In toda America Latina. In, in yeah. throughout whole Latin America. Uh, right. Sam? Um, I um, just wanted, I, if, you, if you read about Che's experiences, you've definitely read about the uh, revolution in Guatemala, and he had an interesting um, comment that years later he ran into Jacobo or Ben's in 1960 um, at basically the first Latin American Youth Congress. Um, I think it was in Cuba, but I'm just going to quote him quickly. He said, we'd like to extend special greetings to Cabo Arbenz, former president of the first Latin American nation in Guatemala, to raise its voice furiously against colonialism and to express the cherished desires of its peasant masses through a deep and courageous agrarian reform. We would like to express our gratitude to him and to the democracy that fell in that country for the example it gave us and for enabling us to make a correct appreciation of all the weaknesses his government was unable to overcome. Mm -hmm. In this way, it has been possible for us here in Cuba to get at the roots of the matter and to decapitate with one strike those who held power as well as a henchman serving them. And you see this in the Cuban Revolution, the very tough process after of the revolutionary tribunals, which did result in deaths, but were necessary to take about some of those people that had committed crimes against the people. And it's not indiscriminate revolutionary killings, but it's victims of those people coming and accusing um, the people of the former regime who have served those, who have served those people. So I guess my, my point is what uh, revolution's messy and that the cadre that took the Cuban Revolution to fruition um, saw part of the process that happened in Guatemala and was able to take those lessons um, to, to, to their fight, right? But my other, my question in part of this is, do you think um, the climate crisis is sort of adding an extra layer of um, refugees in emergency? Yeah, because previously, like, yeah, say the Civil War broke out in North America tomorrow, and we were able to cripple the U.S. military into fighting here, like, takes all the pressure of Latin America, right? But See, like, outside of that, the climate crisis is adding another layer of human uh, refugees. And you see in the states with uh, the concentration camps that are coming up, it just presents for very worrying situations. And talk about the next American genocide being perpetrated on refugees coming from Latin America. And it's part of the reason why we need to push along the revolutionary potential and really try and bring down... This is sounding far-fetched, but essentially bring down the U.S. empire from within. The situation, I mean, if it doesn't, if it doesn't come to a head, the security forces are going to have to crack down at some point, and something's going to come up. But uh, do you see the climate crisis, I guess, as adding an extra layer of uh, refugees, um, an extra layer of crisis that is fueling the, uh, the migrations? Um, and if you look at podcasts like American... Genocide there is like what is this? This tinderbox is being created at, at the U.S. border, um, and just like the magnitude of that situation, how serious it's getting, I guess is partly added. No, 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 no,
para el caso de los refugiados y de lo que está pasando ahorita en las fronteras de detención. Sí, sí, el, cambio, el, la crisis climática, el, el cambio climático. El, la crisis climática está, el movimiento migratorio. Está como que poniendo una capa más encima de... Por supuesto. Por supuesto que sí. So he says, yes, of course, he does believe that, that it's adding up. En Guatemala yeah. tenemos todos los departamentos de Zacapa, Jutiapa, Santa Rosa. So in Guatemala, all these departments were like, you know, kind of uh, states. Jutiapa, Jalapa, Santa Rosa, con sequías fuertes. With, uh, there hasn't been rain for a while, you know. No hay agua. There's, there isn't any water. And this is addition to the already uh, political, economic crisis. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Similar in Honduras. Similar in Honduras, yeah. Similar in Mexico, sí. pero el gobierno en México sí ha tenido alguna reacción. Eh, tenemos lo mismo la situación en Argentina con el, el deshielo del glaciar, en Chile, en Ecuador. You know, ice is melting in, in, uh, in Argentina, Chile, you know, yeah. it's just... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to add uh, and, and something additional, so that's like some that's climate related, right? And it's also, of course, human made, uh, man, man, man made. Uh, but also in Guatemala and uh, in Central America, um, drug lords and also people that want to grow exclusively just palm oil, um, yeah. African yeah. palm yeah. oil, yeah. Yeah. they per on purpose burn. Yeah. Um, Hectares, how do you call it? Hectares of forest. Hectares, oh, hectares of forest. So not only they actually like burn people's uh, fruit trees, um, anything, you know, like all this. So it's, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Y, y, y agrega esto, el sector privado de América Latina está haciendo la gran presión and the private sector in Latin America privatizar el agua en el continente. It's, it's pushing forward a, a big agenda to uh, privatize the water. In, in the whole continent. Shame. Shame. Yeah. Shame. Disgusting. All right, uh, Julius. Uh, great presentation, comrades. I really enjoyed that. Um, I guess I have a comment and a question because um, it's kind of been alluded to a little bit, Barry uh, touched on it, some of the other comrades have, and that is the question of essentially reform or revolution. Mm -hmm. And we see many examples of uh, progressive left-wing governments who the United States may call communists, but, but we know are not communists, uh, who may push for sometimes significant reforms, such as Allende in Chile. We watched a film recently about uh, the coup against Allende in Chile. Uh, in Venezuela, even with Maduro, uh, the government there has pushed the significant reforms, reforms that we would support here in Canada, that we'd like to see working people have here in Canada. But uh, history, especially in Latin America, has shown that you cannot stop halfway or partway right. to a full revolution. <laughs> it has happened time and time again. Even in Chile today, there's a million people on the streets in Chile. It's incredibly inspiring. And hopefully it grows and spreads but without the power of the working class, the working class being put into power, it seems t that time and time again we see that these revolutions and these reforms are pulled back and the revolutions destroyed and the revolutionaries wiped out or forced into exile in country after country. Um, I would like to know why, or maybe you can answer this question, maybe it's changing, but. These emerging movements, do they look to the only example, which is a Latin American example, Cuban of a successful revolution that Cuban. successfully changed the modes and, and the relations of the ownership of the modes of production in a country, and that is Cuba? Yeah. I'd like to know um, if these movements are looking to Cuba as an example more today, and if not, why? Right. Okay. Tres, tres eh, aclaraciones a nivel continental. So he's going to say, uh, he's gonna say three uh, clarifications uh, um, 
continental basis. Yeah, e incluso mundial. In including uh, worldwide. Hasta el día de hoy, till today, no hemos tenido we haven't had ninguna revolución proletaria. Any, um, any workers revolution. No hemos tenido. We haven't had any workers revolution. Yeah. En México tuvimos la revolución agraria de 1910. En México, there was the uh, uh, agrarian revolution. Uh, agrarian revolution of uh, 19... 1910. Uh, 1910. Antes de la revolución bolchevique del 17. Before the um, Bolshevik revolution. La revolución bolchevique fue una revolución obrero campesina. That, uh, the Bolshevik revolution was. Um, Workers and peasants. En Rusia no había el gran proletariado europeo. They didn't have uh, the, the large working European class. Cuba no es una revolución obrera proletaria. Cuba isn't a uh, re uh, working working class and uh, peasants re uh, revolution. ¿Sí? No podemos quemar etapas. We cannot burn uh, st uh, stages. Ya. Yeah. En toda América Latina no hemos llegado a tener el proletariado que conocieron en Europa con la revolución industrial. So in the, throughout the whole Latin America they have, they have there has we haven't seen any workers movement as the one that we see in, during the industrial revolution in Europe. Nunca hemos tenido en todo el continente We Incluso en Canadá, including in Canada, no hemos tenido concentraciones masivas. We haven't had massive concentrations de gran industria obrera. Of uh, industrialist workers, la burguesía aprende. The burgu burguesía <coughs> learns, you know, the burgues. Y aprende más que nosotros. And they learn more than we do. Nosotros a veces nos quedamos atrás. Sometimes we we stay behind. Cuba sigue siendo un ejemplo ético. Cuba keeps being an eth ethical uh, example para todo el continente. For the whole continent. Sigue siendo Cuba. It keeps saying being Cuba. Y es por eso que después de muchos años que lograron aislar a Cuba de América Latina, and that's why because of a lot of time that the, uh, the US had a um, Cuba isolated por la OEA throughout the um, OO. Después logramos que todo el continente then we, estableciera relaciones con Cuba. Then uh, we uh, achieved so that the whole continent can reestablish um, relationships with Cuba. Y claro, hoy vuelven of course, a endurecer today they keep, políticas criminales mm -hmm. contra Cuba. They keep on uh, implementing uh, criminal policies against Cuba. Cuba sigue siendo un ejemplo mayor they keep being a major example que Venezuela than Venezuela Cubans Cuba. la diferencia es que Venezuela está dentro del continente the difference is that Venezuela is inside the continent like in the continent pero Trump no se cansa de decir but Trump uh, he, he's never tired of saying que en Venezuela Maduro sigue en el gobierno por la inteligencia cubana. That uh, Maduro in Venezuela is it's still in power due to Cuban intelligence. Oh, but yeah, that's true. There's, sorry, let me just add something up because I, I, I did understand your question. A lot of those indigenous or, or like workers, uh, peasants, <coughs> movements, uh, for example, the one that I do know of in Guatemala, the one that this uh, Telma Cabrera was leading, uh, she, got, she was in fourth place but then there was already electoral fraud, so she would have actually, it could have been possible that she, she might have won because this movement right now, it's growing and it's growing hard and it's they've been growing for like the 10 more years. Like it, they, they've been through all this, this struggle and now they've actually got allies, academics, uh, progressives, you know, and they're, they are, they want to make a reform in the constitution. They want to uh, call for a national assembly reform. Mm -hmm. And uh, they want to make the indigenous community be actively, that, like, so they can be actively uh, politically involved, just as Maduro did with the with the past one. They included like a different sector. Una, una puntuación muy importante. So something very important. 
los movimientos indígenas campesinos de América Latina, Latin America, Peasant. los movimientos indígenas y campesinos de América Latina, sí son capaces de llegar a un proceso socialista. So yes, they are capable of reaching a uh, socialist uh, revolution. Pero nunca van a llegar a un proceso comunista. But they will never be able to reach a communist. Uh, what was it? Un resultado comunista. Un resultado comunista. A communist result. El socialismo <laughs> contempla <laughs> una convivencia con la propiedad privada. So socialism, socialism, uh, kind of. <coughs> makes a balance, Acepta. accepts Acepta. private Acepta. property, accepts private property. There's a balance. El socialismo lo acepta. So they do accept. El comunismo ya no. Communism don't. El comunismo desaparece el Estado Communism. y desaparece mm -hmm. toda propiedad. Ahí no llegan los movimientos indígenas y campesinos. All right, um, John O. Um, yeah. I have a uh, pregunta. Uh, a question and a, a warning. My question is, I was once in Lago Atitlan 10 years ago. For those who don't know, Lago Atitlan was the, a massive volcano, 10 times the size of uh, St. Helens. Uh, fortunately, it was 100,000 years ago, but now it's filled with water. It's a huge and beautiful lake, beautiful place. But I was there and I, w I visited this uh, town, this Puebla, I think it's called Santiago de Lago, where it's mostly indigenous. Santiago so de Tlán. I, I went for a walk there, and I was warned, don't go too far. But I walked up along the village, and I saw this shrine where 11 campesinos had been massacred by the Guatemalan army. And this massacre, I was sure, is 1954, is more 1980. And they were massacred simply because they tried to do a do-it-yourself land reform, like they just started working the land and say, we own this. But the, the army doesn't like do-it-yourself your land reform. No, they they went in and massacred 11 people. So uh, maybe you could talk about what the army and any attempts at land reform, what happens when they try to do that. That's my question. My warning is about this thing about Israel. There's no question that Israel is becoming a significant arms exporter. There's no doubt. And they're also, they have companies all, all over the world that are very much involved in surveillance, in digital surveillance, and also in public methods of public control. This is for sure. But I, uh, we have to remember, though, well, wherever Jewish people live, they're going to be highly noticeable. Like, they keep their culture, and they're very highly noticeable. But I'd be care very careful, wrongly, uh, associating any Jewish people living in other countries and practicing their culture as being agents of Israel. We have to be very careful that we don't do that. That's called anti-Semitism. So we have to be very careful. We recognize what the state of Israel does and recognizing that Jewish people can live in, in Central America. Because I have seen other people in Central America, Hutterites in Belize, who have a whole village. You see them just like Hutterites in Aylmer, Ontario. Horse and buggy Hutterites with blonde hair living in Belize, and Jehovah's Witness living in Central America. So just a warning that we don't categorize Israeli people living as agents of Israel. That's all. There is a lot of cooperation between the Jews in America, Canada, England, France, and so on, and Israel. It's full cooperation, so you cannot say that there is nothing This is totally separated. It's not at all. So he wants to say something back. Nosotros entendemos muy claramente la diferencia de ser judío a ser sionista. We understand. We have a very clear understanding of what the difference between being a Jewish person is and being a Zionist. Es clara la diferencia. We 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 understand. Pero sí tenemos un problema. Con el judío, but we do have a problem with the Jewish que quiere convertir en judío the a los to convert somebody else, an indigenous person, into Jewish. Eso no podemos aceptarlo. That's unacceptable. Porque eso es otra forma de colonialismo religioso venga de donde. Because that's another form of colonialism, uh, whether it's cultural or religious. No lo podemos aceptar. Son aceptables.
uh, the gentleman in the vest. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. Um, very interesting. Knowing that we're dealing with a very complex algorithm, uh, and you were talking about the burning stages uh, from Latin American to Latin American, what is our current uh, personal value system uh, of young people in, in our countries? How do you see it? Uh, how, how do you actually would describe the, the notion of change? Uh, not the notion of being stuck to the, uh, to, to the phone. Uh, you know, what, how do you describe today the, uh, the intellectual masses, if you wish? Um, do you really see a, a true uh, motor of change, or do you, or do you really uh, see uh, what I call the champagne socialists uh, throughout Latin America? Uh, being Mexican, for example, we saw that with the uh, PRI, uh, we integrated, uh, you know, the, the, you know, we integrate people that want to change into the system. Uh, there is no true belief in it. Uh, so I, I'm just wondering, from Latin America to Latin America, what is the value system that you see today uh, throughout Latin America? Do you see it a true uh, model of change? No, escucho todo. Que de latinoamericano a latinoamericano, a latinoamericano, quiere saber si miras un cambio dentro de. Yo todo, yo, yo se lo puedo preguntar si quieres. Sí, profesor, gracias. Eh, tomando en consideración que estamos viendo un, que eso es un algoritmo muy complejo hoy en día en Latinoamérica, y no estamos viendo con cuestiones binarias, hoy en día realmente se observa en Latinoamérica un cambio uh, intrínseco en el latinoamericano, o estamos viendo únicamente uh, cambios realmente superficiales, o hoy en día que realmente usted siente un... Eh, Un, eh, varios intrínsecos, de valores intrínsecos eh, auténticos en la mentalidad latinoamericana. Ve usted hoy, por ejemplo, en las universidades en donde usted eh, da clases, eh, conciencia realmente de cambio. Eh, y no estoy únicamente hablando de comunismo, socialismo, e, e integración, estoy realmente hablando de un cambio eh, esencial, fundamental, educado. Um, ¿cuál, es, ¿Cuál es el alma hoy en día de Latinoamérica? ¿Cuál es el alma hoy en día? De la, de la persona joven en, en Latinoamérica. Sí, hay un cambio genuino de la base. Yes, there is a genuine uh, change from the bottom. Ajá. Sí, hay un cambio genuino. Yes, there is a, a genuine change. Es justamente lo que hablamos de un nuevo paradigma. And that's uh, what we were talking about, a new paradigm. Yeah. Paradigm. 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 Oh, paradigm. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Paradigm. Eh, donde vamos a tener where we're going to have Procesos de los cuales los teóricos académicos Processes that academics and the theorists Tenemos que aprender Have to learn Tenemos que aceptar que tenemos que aprender de abajo We have to learn, we have to understand that we have to learn from the bottom Durante muchos años hemos estado desde arriba Throughout many years well, we've seen ourselves from an upper perspective Es un cambio genuino So it is a, a genuine change Thank you very much um, our gentleman in the black cap. Oh, I was just going to say something about, uh, I don't know if it's uh, in the topic, about the, the lights that, uh, that were made in, by the United States uh, throughout the centuries, right? I don't know if that's in the topic. No, they did make lights towards uh, the... Well, i just like to point out that uh, when the, uh, a friend of mine was uh, in East uh, Germany while Germany was under socialism, right? Uh, he was there and he said, he was totally impressed. He said uh, that there was equality, there was law and order. So a few years later when the Berlin uh, walked him down, by the, at that time they, they had the Reagan administration, and uh, it was found out later that it was uh, West Germany, not East Germany. East Germany just the East German people were just looking back and saying, what's going on? I was just sitting back and seeing, waiting to see what happened. It was West Germany, under the, with the help of uh, Reagan administration and the United States, that put, put the wall down. And the United States made the people believe, make the people believe that it was East Germany was trying to away, run away from communism or far away, was uh, running away from socialism. No, it was West Germany who, who threw the, the wall down, not East Germany. And a lot of people think today that there was East Germany under the socialist government who was trying to run away from communism. And that was the biggest lie of the 20th century.
you know? And there was another lie too under, I don't know, it was forgotten that the Korean War in the 1950s, which everybody, nobody talks about the Korean War no more because it's forgotten, long gone. But the, the United States told everybody there was just gonna be a police action, that's what they call it. Mm -hmm. this, the American soldiers who got there, it, it, they told the truth, they said, no, that was a full-scale war, you know, where soldiers died. So it goes to show you all these lies that the United States has been telling the people. Like, what are we, puppets that we listen to all the lies? And this is how the United States and, or the Yankees, how, this is how they deceive the people, by telling them lies. Lies, 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 the same thing, like, you know, and this has been going on for this, this past century. Okay. And then sometimes these lies are so, so, you know, so lousy that makes people angry. Like know? the war. So I'm just try to point that. Like out. the war on drugs and how the U.S. was fighting ISIS. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, can I, for the sake of uh, to wrap this up because uh, it's already 9:20, we have two more speakers. That's Corey and oh. Barry. Okay. So. Uh, uh, okay. So we'll have the three speakers, starting with Corey. Please, Corey. Uh, yeah. And then you'll have uh, five minutes to wrap up. Five minutes. Sure. So I have a, a couple comments and, and a question. Um, I want to talk about the exploitation of, of Latin America by um, foreign capital, um, because the, the land there is extremely cheap compared to people who come from West or come from Israel or come from other modernized countries, industrialized countries, right? So they go there and they buy it. I mean, that's a big problem because then it takes land away from the people that live there, right? And the government has no interest in supporting the people that live there. They just sell it off, but it, it sells up their own people. And so this, has, this is leading to my next comment, which is about the amount, how a, a small group can control an entire country. A small, well-armed group um, who controls the government, controls the military, can control the entire country. But there are many people within the government, I'm sure, that are not aligned with that group, but they don't see another way out. And so my question, one of the questions I have for you is about, is about the unions. They said they outlawed unions in, in 1954 after the coup, right? So are unions, are there any unions in, in, in uh, Guatemala that are allowed to come back? Okay. So do they organize, uh, like do they, they organize some protests, I understand. But is there anything in the, in the recent history to try and destabilize the government? Because that's the only way to overthrow a militarized government that's controlling people with repression is to, is to not let the government function, right? Just to stop the government from actually being able to carry out its business, right? And so there, is there any maybe planning or talking of that? I mean, it's fairly radical, and I imagine it would be crushed if it was, if it was known to be happening. But are people talking about that? Is there, is there, is there actions like that taking other than just street protests? And, and um, yeah, um, so that was my question about that. And, and I was thinking about what people, other people said about the youth there and about education. And I was thinking about um, information. Like, is internet, do they have internet in Guatemala? Like, Wi Fi or everywhere? So people have access to it? Is there censorship on the internet in Guatemala? And, um, and, and is there a lot of propaganda or um, whatever that floods from the, from the government or from other reactionary groups in Guatemala <coughs> across the internet there? Or across other telecommunications, uh, media, social media, media? Okay, before you answer, um, yeah. we'll let everyone. Uh, the, Thank you. Two other speakers. You just nailed my question, uh, just about uh, internet and um, yeah, surveillance and all that. Here, Mr. Google runs the show. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Okay. And uh, to finish this off, Barry. Yeah. Well, what we have here, and it's quite interesting and useful, is a debate. We have a debate about strategy, and one of the benefits of a good debate is that it can liberate us from the lies and also uh, liberate us from failed strategies for social change. So I want to address this in, in three parts. But first, a quick preface to something that was said a few moments ago. Um, Israel, the Israeli state, the Israeli military, the Israeli economy is funded chiefly by multi-billion dollar investments from Wall Street. You know, Israel is not the dog, it's the tail. And anything that Israel does in Guatemala is by permission of Wall Street and the Pentagon. We need to be crystal clear on that point. Okay, now three quick points. Number one, about the working class character of the world population and revolution today. Over 60% of the entire world population is working class. It is more proletarian now than ever in human history. In fact, the rural populations, those engaged in agricultural production have been shrinking, even in the least industrialized countries of the world. The world is overwhelmingly proletarian today. That's point number one. Point number two, there is no such thing as a peasant revolution. There were peasant revolts in the 15th and 16th century, but there's never been a peasant revolution. And the reason for that is the peasant is not a coherent, concentrated class 
at the point of production able to control the society and the economy. It's impossible. The peasantry is by definition uh, dispersed and doesn't have common interests. It's anti-landlord, but it doesn't have a common political perspective that can be implemented on a society-wide basis. That's why there's no such thing as a peasant revolution. So to say that this, the Russian Revolution of 1917 is not a workers' revolution is fallacious. Of course, it was a combination of the working class led by the Bolshevik party in alliance with the poor peasantry. But the poor peasantry didn't have an independent perspective. And that was also the case in Cuba. It was, there, was a pe there was an insurrectionary group, a, 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 a group of rebels. No, I need a couple of minutes to answer these points. There, were, there was an insurrectionary process, but there was a general strike that came in behind the uh, rebel army, and that produced a workers' revolution. And the same in Vietnam, and the question is, will that occur in Venezuela? So the, here's the question you need to ask if you want to know the class character of a revolution or of a society. Which class owns the factories? After the Cuban Revolution, the poor farmers, the peasants, didn't own the factories. The factories are owned by the working class through the agency of state power. That makes it a worker state. That makes it a worker state. Even if workers were only 10% of the population, by seizing control of the means of production and creating a state apparatus which can plan the economy, that makes it a worker state. The idea of a two-class state is fallacious, and it leads to strategic errors that we need to be conscious of. Socialism allows for small business. Yes, of course. Socialism has no aspiration to organize the corner grocery store. <laughs> That's not the point. The point is, who is in command of the, 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 the big enterprises? The commanding heights of the economy. If the working class, through its state apparatus, controls and plans the big apparatus, the big uh, factories, mines, mills, all the, the telecommunications and so on, that makes it a worker state. Absolutely, without a doubt. And so the idea of a two-class state or a, a stages theory of revolution, first stage democracy with a partnership with the bourgeoisie, that has been proven to be a disaster over and over again. And that's why the gains of the Guatemalan revolution, which was a political revolution, not a social revolution, that took place during that decade, were lost, were squand squandered, because they didn't go all the way. And what's needed to go all the way is a revolutionary workers' party on a continental basis and on a global basis. Mm -hmm. And as our comrades in Latin America say, and they say it in Spanish, uh, de la sur a la norte, revolución permanente. From the south to the north, permanent revolution. Mm -hmm. That's what we stand for. Hay una pregunta del sindicato y del internet. Eh, del sindicato de internet, de que si tenemos internet en Guatemala, eh, claro que no en todas las áreas, sino todos pueden ir. Eh, no, eh, la, la internet, idea es la influencia del internet. Del internet, eh, manipulación. Sindicatos, sindic que si los sindicatos, eh, por ejemplo. Land, you're talking about land, uh, the, the ownership of land by all big companies as well, mm. part of one of the questions you yeah. asked. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Sí, eh, Tres cosas, por favor. Tres sí, tres cosas. No quiero entrar en una discusión teórica. I don't want to get into a theoretical discussion. Nadie, nadie ha negado la importancia de la clase obrera. No one has denied the importance of the working class. Solo he sido puntual. I've just been punctual. Que no ha habido una revolución proletaria en el mundo. That there hasn't been any proletarian revolution in the world. That's not true. Is. Segundo, Second, no es lo mismo ser it's not the same to be worker que ser proletario. and the pro proletarian. Nosotros tenemos ahora sí obreros a nivel mundial. We have uh, workers in worldwide que no han llegado a la conciencia proletaria. They haven't gotten to the proletarian conscious. Y eso That's lo explicó muy bien Marx, Engels y Lenin. And that Marx, Engels and Lenin explained that very well. Entonces no podemos quemar etapas ni brincar gritando. So that's why we cannot jump uh, stages or get there screaming. La guerrilla en Cuba, the guerrilla in Cuba, no era obrera. Wasn't uh, working class. La guerrilla en Guatemala, the guerrilla in Guatemala, no era obrera. Wasn't working class. La guerrilla en Nicaragua, en Nicaragua, no era obrera. It wasn't working class. Por favor. Class. 
workplace. La guerrilla en Colombia, in Colombia no era obrera. It wasn't a working class. La guerrilla en Perú, in Peru no era obrera. They weren't as well. Y así puedo ir por toda América Latina. And they can, he can do it all yeah. over America Latina. Latin. No Latin. podemos quemar etapas. Y no estoy negando el contenido denying. clasista de la historia. I'm not denying the uh, history, uh, the, the classes of history, but we cannot jump bridges or burn stages. Ahora, el sindicalismo en América Latina. So the unions in Latin America. Uno de los frutos de la revolución del 44. One of the gifts or fruits of uh, the revolution of 1994. And the United Fruit Company um, warned about it. Es cuando Arevalo permitió y Arbenz profundizó la creación de sindicatos en el campo. It's when uh, Arevalo and then followed by Arbenz with, with more into depth of the uh, permission of uh, unions. En el campo. In, in unions in um, on the land, in the land. En el área rural. In, in the Peasants. rural areas. Okay, que antes no había. Yeah, and before there was an A. Y como dije en un momento, and like I said before, Nuestro enemigo, la burguesía, our enemy, the burgesses, the they learn uh, really quick. Y nosotros no. And we don't. Ellos han controlado el sindicalismo en América Latina. So they have, they've controlled the unions in Latin America. ¿Qué hicieron con el sindicalismo mexicano de Lázaro Cárdenas con Pemex? Well, what did they do with the, the union of, uh, with, in the Pemex with who? Pemex se llamaba. Lázaro, Lázaro, with Lázaro Cárdenas. Lázaro Cárdenas. Lázaro Cárdenas. So what did they do with, uh, Lázaro, with the union of Pemex with La Lázaro Cárdenas? Lo corrompieron por completo. They corrupted it completely. En Guatemala hoy la dirigencia sindical In Guatemala, the union, uh, es leadership totalmente corrupta. It's la dirigencia, magisterio, uh, salud, teachers, uh, health. Mi madre y mi padre fueron fundadores del Sindicato Nacional de Maestros de Guatemala. Were founders of the Sindicato Revolucionario. Of uh, the teachers and it was a, a revolutionary union. Hoy, that Today, it's, it, it's sad to see it. Entonces, eso es el papel ahorita, el sindicalismo en América Latina. So unions in Latin America, America right now are bought. Por sus dirigentes. Uh, to, to the uh, leaders. To the leadership. Y la base confundida, en fin. And the misinformation and confusion. En cuanto a internet. Regarding internet. A partir del año 2000. Uh, after 2000. Uh -huh. A partir del año 2000. Cuando empiece todo este cambio en América Latina. When all these changes take, uh, take place in Latin después, America. Y en el mundo del continente. And uh, the world. Después de la ley patriota en Estados Unidos. After the Patriot Act. Y que Internet se convirtió. And Internet became... Antes del 2000, Internet era más bajo. Con so el 2000, se masifica. So after 2000, it just became... Massive. Spread mm -hmm. and massive. Se dieron cuenta del papel de convención ideológica como todo medio de comunicación. So they Internet. learned... They knew that there was a, a really uh, important political and... Um, Mis, yeah, possibility of misinformation in, in the role like any other media. Pero hasta but, el año but no, until 2010, 2010, todos estos instrumentos, all these instruments, computadora, computer, cell phones, no tienen idiomas indígenas. They don't have uh, indigenous languages. Entonces estos servicios so all these no han penetrado haven't penetrated en las mentalidades in, indígenas in, uh, indigenous mentalities in, indigenous community mentality pero eso lo aprendieron but they learn la burguesía burguesies learned that y ahora están creando programas and en idiomas indígenas they're creating programs in indigenous languages para entrar en la cabeza so they can indígenas. like penetrate those communities uh, mindset pero por suerte but lucky, ya es muy tarde. it's too late. Los indígenas aprendieron a usar esto. Indigenous communities learned how to use those devices. Como una herramienta de like ellos. an instrument for, for their use. 
ya no van a poder dominarlos so they're not going to be able to dominate them por internet through internet ya no no more so Um, thank you everyone for coming out. All right, well, thanks for all coming out tonight and uh